here's an opportunity to put all the things that I love into one movie. And I'm not only doing it myself, right? We have the whole crew who also are Disney fans, a building full of them. Mm -hmm. So everyone has been so excited to get to work on this project and they bring a part of their love and themselves to this story. Peter Fong, what's going on? How you doing? How's your day going? Uh, uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been exciting to share a little snippets of the film uh, uh, with you. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I mean, like we were just briefly saying before, the best part about seeing it's like it's amazing that we get to finally see footage of it. But it's always so hard to be like, oh, we can't watch all of it yet. We just want to see more. And we were just so zoned in watching it, so it looks beautiful. That's great. I think the first question I have to ask, and it's the biggest question I'm going to ask, um, how difficult was it for you guys to capture the handsomeness of Chris Pine uh, in animated form? We take great care in transferring his beauty. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, he's a very beautiful man, for sure. Yeah, and he um, the sense of uh, character that he bring to Magnifico was mind-blowing because we know we have this king who is evil, but then at the beginning he has to be charming and everyone in Rosa has to buy that, right? So who can kind of capture both? And and Chris really brought that sense of charm and his voice has to command and his hair is perfect. It's true. So we draw inspiration heavily from that <laughs> as well. <laughs> I think, yeah, you, you look at him, I'm like, this is a incredible transformation of him into animated form, the eyebrows, the hair, everything was perfect. It was great. <laughs> and he, he's so charismatic, right? And I think that's what makes me so excited because I'm like, I cannot wait to see this turn or this, you know, more of what's going to be revealed later on in the film. Disney is celebrating 100 years this year. What does it mean for both of you to have your film, Wish, be part of those celebrations and to mark that monumental occasion. Certainly being at the studio at this particular moment in time, uh, you feel the responsibility, but also the excitement uh, to be able to be here and to uh, create a film uh, uh, that you know generations in the future for the next hundred years will be watching. Um, uh, it's a very special moment. For me, it's, it's been an honor. And then it turns into the sense of fun because I love Disney films growing up and also into the adult, adulthood because I study animation, right? Of course. So like, here's an opportunity to put all the things that I love into one movie. And I'm not only doing it myself, right? There's Chris Buck, who has been at Disney for a long time. We have the whole crew who also are Disney fans, a building full of them. Mm -hmm. So everyone has been so excited to get to work on this project and they bring a part of their love and themselves to this story. I love that. It's, you know, it's a hundred years in the making for sure. Yes. And, and I love that we're getting the nods to Snow White, which obviously was the first Disney, you know, animated film. Are there any other animated films that you both look to? And like, you know, we want to, you know, include, you know, little Easter eggs to this or, or ones that you just looked at for inspiration to actually create Wish? Well, certainly with the teens, you, you see with the inspiration there. Uh, and I think there are other nods to uh, Disney film. The people who are familiar with our films uh, will find a lot of fun. We draw a lot of inspiration from Sleeping Beauty in terms mm -hmm. of the looks and the composition. We even um, go with the cinemascope aspect ratio that was last used in that film to keep the sense of a, a moving painting illustration. And I, and I, and I want to talk about that because, you, you know, we're blending like 2D animation and 3D animation. It's very different from anything that we've ever seen before. Um, in animation, and I love that this year specifically, you know, we've gotten movies like Spider-Verse, we've gotten Ninja Turtles, and even Elemental that were very, seeing very different styles of animation. Why do you think now uh, animation's more important than ever to as a medium for telling stories? I think animation brings a sense of joy and be able to enjoy that with your family and loved ones in the theater. And in Disney animation, try the songs are where it's at and to be able to be there Definitely. and know that you're going to sing along <laughs> to these songs <laughs> maybe forever <laughs> yeah there's there's a, definitely a couple songs the two songs that we heard today i'm like oh this is <laughs> this is going to stay with me for a while yeah. and uh and i'm curious speaking of things staying with you you know you both mentioned today that you know bambi was the first one that you remember watching in theater and beauty and the beast for yourself do you guys remember what was going through your heads when you were watching those movies on the big screen for bambi i can't I can't necessarily say what it was then, but I can tell you what my takeaway as a filmmaker was, and that I remember obviously the point where the mother 
passes away, and that's mm-hmm. very tragic. But I also remember Thumper and laughing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as a filmmaker, knowing that our films can run a span of emotions, and that's part of the experience. So I always say, if if you can laugh and cry and and uh, be scared all within the same movie, then it feels like you've been on on a experience. Definitely, and fun for all of you. For me, it's it's the visual style. I love to draw. When I saw that movie, I just want to draw the beast and her and the teacup, all of it. And and to me, to what struck me in animation is that I was able to relate to someone that I have almost nothing in common with besides I love to read. So there's <laughs> that. <laughs> that animation and the visual storytelling of it all really transcends different cultures, different languages. And that part was was drawn me to, to this medium. And I think when you think of animation, you really, anything you could imagine, we could see on the screen now. And I think there's no more fitting movie than one called Wish, where we're now looking at something that I think that magic is in all of Disney's films, right? Mm-hmm. I love that. Do you guys, did you guys ever, when you were kids, look up to the sky? Like, what were you wishing for? What were you wishing on a star for? Uh, I think for me, it's, it's more about always looking up to the sky in wonder and then and, and trying to find meaning and purpose in it uh, uh, and uh, you know I'm still in awe of, of the universe there's a sense of wonder when you look up and you're just wondering like what else is out there and what are the possibilities that your life can take you as a young person as an adult yeah. even and you know you you guys were mentioning earlier today with Julia Michaels what was it about her music that you're like this is like there's some bangers in the song or in this film already <laughs> and I was like I, I'm like we need the soundtrack to drop for this so we can start listening to them uh what was it about her songs it was like you know what we need we need to infuse this because they they also feel very modern but also very classic it's it's an interesting blend i think you just hit on the key for us is first of all she has a love herself of the disney animation musicals um so she comes with a deep love and respect for that but she brings her modern sensibility to it so uh the fact that she wrote seven incredible songs all of which are very different from each other um is pretty remarkable it's amazing and does chris pine get to have like a villain Villain song in this movie. It was yes, old. we're so excited. I can't wait. You know, there's some there's some great villain songs yeah. in, the, in the history of animated films. Yeah, uh, I'm just thinking of like you know Scar and Lion King and yeah. so many other ones. So we were talking about this being a hundred years celebration. What do you wish for the next hundred years of Disney animation, or for even just for Disney films? What are you hoping the next hundred years brings for film and for for shows and for telling stories at Disney? I think with each film, we're progressing. We, you know, we have something to learn from, right? And I feel like the tools and technology keep progressing forward. And in terms of stories, we have a um, a lot of new generations entering the studio, and I'm excited of like story that they will bring. Um, and I think that studio would just keep moving forward okay. and bringing joys and hope to the audience. I mean, even Walt, yeah. you know, always embraced new technology. So uh, I would hope that that continues uh, well into the future. I love that. Thank you both for your time today. You're so lovely. Cannot wait to see the rest of this movie. <laughs> it's going to be a long wait, but we're, we're so excited and uh, we just cannot wait to talk more about it. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.